Your car's air conditioning, it's just blowing warm air, or worse, no air at all. The thought of going to a shop and spending hundreds of dollars just to diagnose might sound frustrating. But here's the good news. Most AC issues can be diagnosed and fixed at home, and some of them take less than 5 minutes and cost under $20. One of these fixes could save you from replacing a $700 part for no reason, and another is the number one thing dealerships hope you never check. However, with the right approach, you can save serious money by learning how to troubleshoot and repair your car's AC system yourself. In this video, I'm going to show you the real reasons why your car's AC isn't cooling, how to find the problem, and walk you through step-by-step -step solutions that won't empty your wallet. So, stick around to the end because if you skip even one of these steps, you could blow your AC repair budget straight out the window. How the AC system works. Before we dive in let's get the basics down because if you understand how it works, you'll understand why it fails. Your car's air conditioning is a closed-loop system made up of several parts the compressor, condenser, expansion valve or orifice tube, evaporator, and refrigerant lines. The compressor pressurizes refrigerant gas, which flows through the condenser and releases heat, turning it into a liquid. That liquid then moves through the expansion valve, dropping in pressure and cooling down. It then enters the evaporator inside your dashboard, where it absorbs heat from the cabin air. If any part of the system fails or even leaks slightly, the whole cooling process breaks down. Number 1. Check the refrigerant level. The most common reason your AC isn't cold is low refrigerant, usually R134A or R1234YF, depending on the vehicle. A small leak over time can cause the system to lose enough pressure that the compressor won't even turn on. You can check this yourself using a refrigerant recharge kit with a pressure gauge. With the engine running and AC on max, connect the gauge to the low pressure port, usually found near the passenger side firewall or under the hood near the compressor. If the pressure is under 25 PSI, your system is low and likely needs a recharge. Slowly add refrigerant, watching both the pressure and air temperature coming from the vents. Once the pressure reaches the normal range, the air should begin cooling again. Just be careful, don't overcharge. Too much refrigerant can reduce cooling and even damage the system. Number 2. Is the compressor engaging? If you turn on your AC and the air stays warm, check if the compressor is engaging. With the engine running and AC on, pop the hood and listen for a click, or watch to see if the compressor clutch is spinning. If it's not engaging, the issue could be a blown fuse, a bad relay, a low refrigerant pressure cutoff, or a failed clutch. First, check the AC fuse and relay in your vehicle's fuse box. If those are working, test for power at the compressor using a multimeter. If the clutch gets power but doesn't engage, the clutch or the compressor itself may be faulty. In some cases, replacing just the clutch is possible, but often a full compressor replacement is needed. If your compressor is spinning but you're still not getting cold air, the issue might be internal, such as worn pistons or damaged valves and the compressor likely needs to be replaced. Number 3. Finding leaks in the system. If your refrigerant was low and recharging helped only for a few days, you likely had a leak. AC systems are sealed, so refrigerant shouldn't escape unless there's a problem. You can use UV dye to find leaks. Just charge the system with a small amount of dye-infused refrigerant, run it for 10 to 15 minutes, and then inspect the system with a UV flashlight. Look closely at hose connections, service ports, the condenser, and the area around the evaporator drain. You can also try spraying soapy water on suspected areas and look for bubbles. Some leaks are extremely slow and hard to find especially if they're at the evaporator, which is hidden inside the dash. In that case, a smoke machine or electronic leak detector can help locate the issue. Common Leak Locations Leaks can occur in several places, but some areas are more common than others. O-rings and hose fittings often wear out due to age and pressure. The Schrader valves at the service ports can leak if the core is damaged. The condenser, which sits at the front of the vehicle, is vulnerable to road debris and rock damage. The evaporator core can corrode over time, especially if the AC system has absorbed moisture. And the compressor's front shaft seal can leak after years of use. Once you find the leak, replace the damaged part, install new O-rings with a light coat of refrigerant oil, and then pull a vacuum on the system if you have the tools. After that, you can recharge it and test the results. Number 4. Don't forget the cabin air filter. Sometimes, your AC is working fine mechanically, but you're not feeling cold air simply because the airflow is restricted. A clogged or dirty cabin air filter can make it seem like your AC is broken when it's just a maintenance issue. 
Check your owner's manual to find the filter, usually behind the glove box or under the dashboard, and inspect it. If it's full of leaves, dust, or debris, replace it. It's an easy $10 to $20 fix that takes 5 minutes. Better airflow means better cooling performance. Number 5. Blower motor and fan issues. If no air at all is coming out of the vents, or if airflow is weak at higher fan settings, the issue could be your blower motor or blower motor resistor. Try switching between different fan speeds. If the fan only works on one or two speeds, the resistor is probably bad. If there's no air on any speed, the blower motor itself could have failed. Listen for strange noises like squealing or clicking, which can also indicate a failing motor or debris caught in the fan. Replacing a blower motor is generally straightforward and doesn't require special tools. Number 6. Blend door or actuator failure. In some vehicles, the AC system may be cooling just fine, but you still feel warm air because of a blend door issue. Blend doors control whether hot or cold air gets sent through the vents. If a blend door actuator fails, the system may be stuck on heat, or you might get different temperatures on the driver and passenger sides. Symptoms include clicking sounds under the dash, inconsistent temperatures, or air that won't change regardless of what the dial says. Many actuators are accessible through the glove box or footwell area and can be replaced without removing the dash. They're affordable and commonly fail with age. Now let's look at some FAQs on this. 1. Why does my car's AC blow cold air at first, then turn warm after a few minutes? That usually means the system is shutting itself down due to a fault. Common causes are a failing condenser fan, can't cool refrigerant at idle, a bad pressure sensor sending wrong readings, or the compressor clutch disengaging due to overheating or internal wear. 2. Can running my AC with low refrigerant damage the compressor? <clears throat> refrigerant also carries oil that lubricates the compressor. When levels are low, lubrication drops, causing the compressor to overheat, seize, or fail prematurely, which can turn a $50 recharge into a $700 plus repair. 3. Why does my AC have a bad smell when I turn it on? A musty or moldy smell usually means that mold or bacteria are growing on the evaporator inside the dash. A sharp, chemical smell could be a refrigerant leak. Cleaning the evaporator with an AC foam cleaner and running the fan without AC for a few minutes before parking can help prevent regrowth. When to take it to a professional? If your system has a major leak, a failed evaporator, or a completely seized compressor, you might be better off having a professional handle it. Shops have the equipment to safely recover refrigerant, vacuum test the system, and recharge it by weight. That said, a lot of common AC problems like leaks, recharges, filter changes, and bad actuators can absolutely be handled in your own driveway. If you're equipped with basic tools and a little patience, you can save hundreds to over a thousand dollars.